Invasive species can cause massive negative impacts on an ecosystem, and they also have massive negative impacts on a country's economy. Of course, invasive species shouldn't be villainized, but there is a reason why we try to control them. In most cases, invasive species are invasive because they've been transported by us humans, and us humans are also the worst invasive species in the world. Wherever you travel on this planet, you will find non-native creatures that are in an ecosystem where they don't belong. And Europe is one of the worst affected areas. Because most of the countries in Europe are connected to each other, they do share a lot of landscapes and wildlife. This also means that they often share the same invasive species, and these species can spread very easily. Luckily for the overall European ecosystem, there are plenty of predators in Europe that are happy to target invasive species. In this video I will be focusing on these animals, as I will be going through three European animals that help to control invasive species. And for our first example we will be heading into the fresh waters of Europe, as our first problem species is the signal crayfish. Now the signal crayfish is one of the most famous examples of an invasive species in Europe, as they've simply caused so many problems, and have also multiplied at an astonishing rate. The species was first introduced into Europe in the 1970s, and this was after crayfish plague had decimated native crayfish populations. Unfortunately, the signal crayfish outcompeted our native crayfish, and also transmitted the crayfish plague to other species. Their population soon exploded, and today they are the most widespread alien crayfish in Europe, being found in 25 countries across the continent. These crayfish are of course bad news for the ecosystem because they not only outcompete native crayfish, but they also feed on native creatures and fish eggs. As well as this, they also dig their burrows into riverbanks, and this causes erosion and sediment pollution. To find out why the signal crayfish is done so well in Europe, all you need to do is look at the differences between most American and European freshwater ecosystems. In America, there are plenty of freshwater predatory fish that would happily feed on this crayfish, but in Europe there are very few. Pike are some of the top predators in European waterways, and these fish are most happy feeding on other fish. Of course there are fish in Europe that would happily feed on these crayfish, but there are a lot less freshwater predatory fish in Europe than there are in America. But luckily Europe is home to one famous freshwater predator that will happily tackle these signal crayfish, that being the Eurasian otter. Now this species of otter is very widespread, and can be found across many parts of Asia and Europe, as well as northern Africa. Across its range it can be found in both fresh and salt water, and they've become masters at feeding on a vast array of aquatic creatures. In most cases they're not very picky when it comes to choosing food, and will feed on pretty much anything that's available. In European rivers a lot of the time this is the signal crayfish, and it's one of the few freshwater predators that will tackle them. Over the past few hundred years, the Eurasian otter has faced many threats, and in some parts of Europe they completely disappeared. Damming and water pollution were some of their main threats, and a decline in fish numbers also meant a decline in otter numbers. Globally today they are still listed as near threatened, and in Europe it really is important that we help them. Without the Eurasian otter there will be less predators to tackle these signal crayfish, and also to tackle many of the other aquatic invaders. Even though they can't completely get rid of the signal crayfish, they can make a dent, and the Eurasian otter really is an unsung hero. Our next two problem species are both mammals, and for our first species we can head back into the fresh waters of Europe, as we have the koi poo. The koi poo also goes by the name of Nutria, and this mammal isn't only invasive in Europe. They are one of the world's worst invasive species, and have also taken over parts of North America and Japan. They were first introduced into Europe in the 19th century, and the main purpose of this was for fur farming. Of course many of these creatures were released or escaped, and eventually found themselves in the wild. Instead of affecting native animals, the biggest damages that the koi poo brings are to the environment. They consume vast amounts of aquatic vegetation, and also damage the nesting sites of rare birds, and sometimes even feed on their eggs. In Europe, some people struggle to identify this creature, as it can look very similar to the European beaver. The easiest way to tell them apart is by looking at their tails, as the koi poo has a more rat-like tail. Strangely, this isn't the only chunky mammal that's invaded from the Americas, because in some parts of Europe you will be able to find the raccoon. The raccoon is a very intelligent and hardy creature, and this makes it the perfect invasive species. They can adapt to a wide variety of climates and ecosystems, and famously do very well in urban areas. This means that they can adapt to life in new countries very easily, and then multiply at an astonishing rate. 
As well as being invasive in large parts of Europe, they are also invasive in Japan, and they've proven to be very hard to get rid of. The story of their introduction into Europe is a very strange one, because at first they were introduced in 1934, and this was when a man purposely introduced two breeding pairs, as he put it, to enrich the fauna. Eleven years later, 25 more escapes from a fur farm, and this was enough to kickstart a population. One of the worst affected areas in Europe is Germany, and although their numbers are slightly coming down now, in 2020, there are thought to be a million raccoons in Germany alone. Raccoons can have a massive negative impact on an ecosystem, as they will happily feed on anything that is smaller than them, and this sometimes includes endangered species. As well as this, they will famously go through people's rubbish, and this is what's made them a hated species in large areas of the US. Luckily in Europe, we have a predator that will happily go after both of these animals, that being the red fox. Of course the red fox is not endemic to Europe, but is in fact one of the most widespread species in the world. There are multiple subspecies, and the red fox is also a massive invasive species itself. It causes major problems in Australia, mainly by feeding on its native fauna, and also competing with the native predators. Red foxes will hunt raccoons both in the US and in Europe, but the adults are often avoided. As red foxes aren't the largest of predators, they don't often go after the adults, but they will happily take their young. The koi poo, on the other hand, is a relatively easier meal, yet taking them down is still not easy. They still have a strong bite on them, and of course very large teeth. Despite this, red foxes will still sometimes go after adults, but they are much happier going after their young. Of course, red foxes aren't the only predators that control both of these mammals, but they are possibly the most numerous, and also the most cunning. So even though they can't always attack the adults, they are doing their job at controlling invasive species. But our final two problem species are once again two American invaders, and to find them once again we will be heading into Europe's fresh waters. The pumpkin seed is a small to medium sized sunfish, and was first introduced in the late 19th century. It was imported mostly to be a pond fish, but of course many of these were released or escaped, and quickly found their way into the fresh waters of Europe. The pumpkin seed is a very aggressive fish, and will easily outcompete and bully many native species. As well as this, they also protect their eggs aggressively, and this ensured that many of their eggs eventually hatched, and large amounts of them made it to adulthood. Pumpkin seed fish also feed on other fish and amphibians, so in some cases they really can be bad news for the ecosystem. Another American invader that has a similar effect is the American bullfrog. This frog once again is one of the worst invasive species in the world, and is invasive over three continents. In Asia they were first imported for food, and then many of these frogs escaped from farms. In Europe it's thought that they were introduced as pets, or as stowaways on shipments of live fish from America. These bullfrogs dwarf many of our native amphibians, and made it far too easy for them to grow in number, and eventually take over. Although a lot of species in Europe will target this bullfrog, it has way more natural predators in the US, and thus has a better chance of success in Europe. Luckily there is one very large predatory bird in Europe that is more than happy to take down both of these American invaders. The grey heron is a common sight in many European wetlands, and is a very well adapted predator. Just like many other species of heron they are great at hunting fish, and will also feed on most other aquatic prey. Their list of prey of course includes the American bullfrog and the pumpkin seed fish, and they are somewhat helpful in keeping their numbers down. In many parts of Europe they are seen as negative creatures to have around, simply because they feed on pond fish, and and also fish in stocked lakes. But these herons are simply trying to get their next meal, and it isn't their fault that there are plenty of fish in ponds. Really, we should be celebrating this bird's presence in Europe, as it simply does such a good job at controlling aquatic invasive species. Of course, there are plenty of other creatures that could have made it on this list, so if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.